All right, good afternoon and welcome to our June information session. Get a clue about measure reviews, primer, MSR, and ENM. My name is Haley Von Holst and I am the information session lead for the CMS Measures Management System contract supported by Mattel. All right, our presenters this afternoon, uh, we have Mel Gross and Kim Rawlings with CMS and then Anna Mickey uh, with Battelle today to dive into this topic. All right, next slide, please. All right, so the purpose of today's webinar is to explain similarities and differences in the goals and evaluation criteria for three distinct measure review processes managed by the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, uh, CPE. So we're gonna describe the goals and evaluation criteria for pre-rulemaking measure review, measure set review, and endorsement and maintenance. And then we'll discuss the unique perspectives of primer, MSR, and e &M committees um, and what they apply during their review. All right, so if you'd like to download today's slides, they'll be available on the MMS Hub after the presentation. We will also post a recording of today's session on the MMS Hub in a few weeks. All right, so as part of the Measures Management Systems Outreach Task, we uh, produce these information sessions uh, throughout the year to educate about quality measurement topics and engage those interested in measure development and maintenance. So I highly encourage you to submit questions throughout today's presentation using the Q&A uh, feature near the bottom of your screen, and then we'll try to address as many as we can at the end of the presentation today. Then we'll conclude with that Q&A segment. Um, and with that, I will turn it over to our first presenter here, uh, Anna, to further introduce our topic. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Haley. So hello, everyone. My name is Anna Mickey from Battelle. I'm the deputy task lead for the endorsement and maintenance task. So I'll kick us off with a couple of introductory slides, and then I'll pass it off uh, to Kim to talk about primer. Uh, so next slide. Okay, so Battelle supports two CMS contracts. First, since 2014, Battelle has served as the measures management contractor, overseeing the measures management system, or MMS, which is a trusted source for quality measures and quality measure development and maintenance information. And since 2023, Battelle has served as the CMS-recognized consensus-based entity, or CBE, bringing together members from across the healthcare and quality landscape who are interested in promoting meaningful quality measurement, the MMS and CBE teams work together to support the statutorily required pre-rulemaking process shown on the graphic in this slide. And to facilitate the execution of CBE tasks, Patel formed the Partnership for Quality Measurement or PQM, which is comprised of all interested parties, including healthcare providers, patients and caregivers, measure experts and health information technology specialists. And as the CBE, Patel manages the pre-rulemaking measure review or primer process, the measure set review or MSR process, and the endorsement and maintenance or EM measure review processes sponsored by the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services. <clears throat> Next slide. The three measure review processes in today's presentation occur during the measure implementation phase when a measure progresses from the development state into an active in use state. The review of quality and efficiency measures for use by the Department of Health and Human Services in select Medicare quality reporting and value-based programs begins with pre-rulemaking, shown by the first milestone on this timeline. A measure may then proceed to a pre-rulemaking measure review or primer process, and if selected for implementation, the measure will be proposed through federal rulemaking, and if finalized, implemented into the applicable CMS Medicare quality reporting or value-based program. Measures implemented into these CMS programs are reviewed annually for continued use in the program as part of the Measure Set Review, or MSR. The Endorsement and Maintenance, or ENM, process evaluates and endorses measures for use within an accountability application, such as public reporting or payment programs. Accountability applications are not limited to CMS programs only. Measures can be submitted for initial endorsement review at any point in time, but submission occurs most commonly before, during, or shortly thereafter pre-rulemaking. Endorsed measures are reviewed every five years for maintenance. So during today's webinar, we'll review the primer, MSR, and ENM measure reviewed processes. 
I'll now pass it off to Kim Rawlings from CMS to discuss Primer. Thank you so much, Anna. Um, so yes, my name is Kim Rawlings, um, and I work in the Quality Measurement and Value-Based Incentives Group within the Center for Clinical Standards and Quality at CMS. Um, I am the lead of Primer, the pre-rulemaking measure review, as well as the lead of the CMS National Quality Strategy. And so it's, it's nice to kind of get in the weeds with measures um, here through this process, but then also have a, a little bit of a global outlook on things as well. Um, so if we can go to the next slide. Before we jump into um, specifically talking about primer, I really just wanna like take a step back a little bit and set the stage um, because there's a lot of work that comes before the measures get to um, primer. So first off here with primer, we are specifically talking about pre-rulemaking. It's a part of the pre-rulemaking process. Um, and as such, only um, measures that are being proposed for Medicare, um, Medicare quality reporting and value-based programs are required to go through the federal pre-rulemaking process. Um, and so programs like um, the Marketplace Quality Rating System, all of the various Medicaid core sets, et cetera, they do not need to go through this pre-rulemaking process and subsequently do not need to go through primer either. Um, but as many of you probably know, each year CMS invites measure stewards um, to submit measures through our system, CMS Merit, for consideration to go onto the MUC list, the measures under consideration list. Um, the period for that submission closes uh, sometime in the May timeframe. Then our program and measure leads spend all of June and July really considering and looking at each of the candidate measures individually to see if it could be a good fit for the program, if it fills a gap, et cetera. Then come um, time for August, we have that list together of measures that we are considering putting into our program. It's drafted. And so then from September until November, it goes through review by not only CMS and all of the, the various components of CMS, but also HHS, as well as um, EOP, um, the Office of the Executive President. Um, so they all review the list and then once it's uh, gone through all of those reviews, it's published no later than December 1st. And so you see that represented in that kind of second uh, bucket there. And then from there, um, it goes uh, per the statute, um, a multi-interested party group provides recommendations to HHS no later than February 1st. And then we um, take those candidate measures and propose the ones that we would like to propose in, in the rules. Next slide. So with this process, um, primer is really that third bucket. Primer is the process by which the multi-interested um, party groups provide those recommendations to us. Um, and so it's really important, as with any sort of commenting and any sort of committees meeting, et cetera, that we really are getting feedback from a diverse group of individuals, not just individuals that receive care and, and give care and provide care, um, but also thinking about all of the you know, national associations, the um, the um, sometimes the health plans, um, sometimes um, EHR vendors um, can be on these committees, um, etc. So really just a whole host of folks to make sure that we get a lot of various interested parties represented at the table to be able to give that feedback. Um, and there are some resources that can be found specific to Primer on the Partnership for Quality Measurement website there. Next slide. And so the goal of 
um, the goal of pre rulemaking is really to get that added feedback before a measure goes into into rulemaking. And so uh, given that primer is a piece of the pre rulemaking process, uh, those goals align. Um, so the goal for primer is really to gather that feedback, like I said, from a diverse group of individuals, organizations, et cetera. Um, that way we just have an extra layer of feedback before rulemaking, which of course helps to increase transparency and engagement and helps us on the CMS. And it gives us more feedback and input as we're considering which measures to propose into the program. And so, their purpose and, and their um, kind of direction is to really apply the measure selection criteria that's been outlined that everyone has had a chance to weigh in on, to apply that to each measure included on the MUC list and make a recommendation on whether or not it should be adopted. As you can imagine, it can be, um, it, it can be challenging um, to, to kind of hear all of those voices and have all of those voices kind of come to consensus. And so the team has developed a process, a modified process for the novel hybrid Delphi and nominal groups. Whoa, that's a mouthful. Um, <laughs> but in short, uh, I'll go over it a little bit. It's, it's a process that really helps to engage um, around 60 folks um, to help them weigh in on each of these measures in addition to public comment more broadly. Next slide. And so as you can see here, um, this is kind of, this is the, the committee composition. Um, as I mentioned, it's really important that this is a diverse group. And so we have patients, caregivers, advocates, other individuals receiving care, clinicians of all sorts, facilities, um, clinician associations, facility associations. We do have a few purchasers and plans on. Um, but then it's also important that in addition to kind of representing these different um, parties and, and, and their kind of perspectives, that we also have experts in the room as well. And so really looking to try and um, bring in experts from the, have the perspective of, of rural health and how the measures could impact those communities as well as health equity and, and looking at health disparities and uh, is a particular measure going to advance health equity or is it going to increase um, the prevalence of disparities? And then different you know, researchers in, in health services, et cetera. And so Primer as a whole uh, has around 180 individuals. Um, there, they are split up between three committees, um, a hospital committee, a clinician committee, committee, and then a post-acute care, long-term care committee as well, each having about 60 individuals. So again, a lot of feedback for each of these measures. And then furthermore, within each committee, we have an advisory group and we have a recommendation group. And the advisory group, their purpose is to really work on providing written feedback and really guiding the discussion that the recommendation group is going to have. Then as we get closer to that February timeframe, it will, the recommendation group will discuss the measures and they will be the ones that will vote. I'll go to the next slide, please. Um, so here you can see some of the specifics. I won't go into I won't go into a bunch of detail um, here, but essentially it, it's a overview of the process as well as the timeline. There's a lot that happens between um, December 1st and February 1st when, when the recommendations to HHS are, are statutorily mandated. Um, but the important thing to note here is that, you know, we have two opportunities for public comment, the first of which is approximately three weeks long. Um, and then that we're getting feedback from 180 um, people, around 60 people per for each measure. And so it's a ton of feedback, both 
um, in writing as well as in the discussion to really help make um, great recommendations to, to us as we consider whether to move forward with some of these measures. Next slide. And just to have a kind of quick peek here, um, primer is unique in, in the sense that um, the evaluation criteria is really around, is this measure appropriate for the program that the measure steward proposed it for? Um, so we're not necessarily looking at like the specifics with the science or, you know, is this a good measure overall? It's really about, is this measure a good fit for this program? And so really looking at the concept um, and the context in which that program will be used and is it tailored to um, fit the needs of, of the specific population that that program is targeting? Also looking at the appropriateness of scale. Um, so kind of looking overall at the uh, measure portfolio um, of that program that it's being suggested to and, and how is that measure going to fit within that portfolio. And then also time to value realization. So really looking at the um, short and long-term positive impacts on the targeted program and population um, that the measure is uh, measuring um, as the measure continues to mature and making sure that there are no unintended consequences there. Um, and I think with that, I'm going to turn it over to Mel to talk about the measure set review. Hi, thank you, Kim. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining today. I also uh, work in the same um, area as Kim. Um, so I'm in Quimvig and in CCSQ as well. Um, so I usually go by Mel, but you'll usually see uh, my email is Melissa, um, but you can call me Mel. Um, I am the new task lead for the measure set review process. Next slide, please. Okay, um, so the measure set review background, it's a step-by-step -step process where a group of diverse individuals uh, representing a range of healthcare expertise and lived experiences review and agree on which measures should continue to be used in CMS quality reporting programs. Um, so it's just, it's also a part of the entire review process that the CBE does as a whole. Um, so it, it, you know, continues on that process of reviewing the measures within CMS quality reporting programs. Um, MSR allows interested parties to consider the purpose of each program's measures and weigh the impact of these measures against the burden of their implementation. Um, so making sure that, um, you know, they're, they're in a good uh, place in the program and that they're, they're appropriate. Um, I'm sure we already shared this, but you can always find more information on the measure set review uh, resources on the Partnership for Quality Measurement or PQM website. Next slide. So the goal of uh, the MSR or measure set review process is to review the CMS quality program measures for continued use. Um, so ultimately, you know, it helps us to optimize our CMS measure portfolio, and it just helps us to determine whether a measure, you know, in a specific program should continue to be used if it still makes sense for that program. Next slide. So we already discussed the, the recommendation groups for the primer committees. Um, the MSR uh, recommendation group is a, a little bit different in that it takes already, you know, the people that are in these other committees, it takes a subset of those. Um, and there is a 25 to 30, um, you know, 
recommended, you know, recommendation group um, total for this process. It's not as large as primer, but um, it's a subset of those same groups. Next slide. You also saw a similar timeline um, for primer. Um, so for MSR, we're actually in the process right now. Um, so um, I'll go through a little bit of this, um, but the measure set review, uh, it looks at the cascade of meaningful measures as a start to identify the measures that are gonna be in um, the 35 measures to be reviewed. Um, that goes through a public comment period. Uh, CMS is given a chance to, to review and look at those measures as well. Um, and then we move into a process once we finalized which measures are going to be on the list. We then move into an analysis phase um, and there are assessments that are created um, and an analysis of those measures um, that are shared. That also goes through a public comment period as well. Um, let's see. So aside from that, we're kind of in this middle section, this orange section of analysis and feedback. Um, so if you look to the right, we've already established you know, the measures that are gonna be on the list. Um, so right now, if you, if you look down on this right graphic, um, we've already received a uh, public comment um, and now we are doing a development of the preliminary assessment. So we're kind of in this June, July timeframe um, and those uh, preliminary assessments uh, will go through public comment again uh, in July. Um, and then we'll have a measure set review um, meeting in the fall. Um, next slide. Okay. So the recommendations for continued use of a measure are based on updated information on the measure's properties, performance trends, programmatic performance data, um, prior or updated testing data from developers and whether the measure continues to support the program's needs and priorities. Um, and the CBE reviews each measure's scientific acceptability, conducts ad hoc expert interviews and synthesizes the information into a report for the MSR committees to review. Next slide. So going back to what we were discussing for the selection of measures, um, what the CBE uses is the cascade of meaningful measures, which um, it, it helps to prioritize the, the measures. Um, so they've kind of organized it by three cycles. But Battelle ultimately aims to strategically consider all measures that are used in CMS quality programs for MSR over the course of a five-year period. Um, they want to make the, the MSR process more manageable um, and the portfolio has been divided into three different cycles using that cascade as a guide. And for those of you who are not familiar, the Cascade of Meaningful Measures is a tool to help prioritize existing healthcare quality measures um, to help align or reduce the number of measures and identify where there are gaps or where there's you know, a need for measures to be developed. Um, every MSR cycle, uh, Battelle proposes a set of measures across programs and populations within a select Cascade priority for review. And selection of a cascade priority may be informed by conversation with key interested parties, such as the primer committee members, CMS, uh, and other national uh, policymakers through environmental scans from conferences and other national healthcare priority activities. Um, so this approach manages the volume of measures under review for each cycle. And the cascade priorities are, and you can see in this house graphic here, um, 
person-centered care, safety, chronic conditions, seamless care coordination, equity, affordability and efficiency, wellness and prevention, and behavioral health. And right now we are uh, using cycle C and in the affordability and efficiency for this year's measure review. Next slide. All right, so the evaluation criteria for MSR, um, meaningful meaningfulness in the context of use. So measure sets are evaluated across program, target populations, and time. Um, when measures are initially added to the programs, the decisions to add them are supported by evidence that the measure is meaningful and necessary to yield a positive benefit. Patient healthcare journey, the patient journey through the healthcare system can be defined in various ways. For example, patient experience of care, patient outcomes, patient wellness. Um, some of the measures may impact the patient at the population level, while others might be more impactful on, a, on vulnerable populations. So the purpose of this criteria is to determine if the measure set is implemented across the patient journey in a manner consistent overall. Then, excuse me, entity data stream parsimony. Measures individually may be determined to be feasible to collect and report quality data, and the benefit of such data collection and reporting may exceed the burden. However, if a set of measures within a program do not align well, um, such as a slight difference in age ranges, uh, differences in the target population, the data source, um, or the reporting mechanism, this can uh, contribute additional burden to the reporting entity. And so the purpose of this criteria is to identify and mitigate measure set redundancies and burden. Um, so unlike the primer process, MSR requires a simple majority greater than 50% to arrive at a voting outcome. And that's either recommend or do not recommend the measure to be retained. The higher consensus standard for primer is applied because decisions to include measures in quality programs have the potential to add burden to persons and entities. And so this is not the case for MSR. All right, I think that is all for MSR that we have today and I will be passing it to Anna. Wonderful, thanks Mel. Hello everyone again. Okay, so let's review the endorsement and maintenance process. <clears throat> Next slide. So the Medicare Improvements for Patients and Providers Act of 2008 requires the Department of Health and Human Services to contract with the CBE regarding performance measurement. The CBE reviews and endorses quality measures through a transparent consensus-based process incorporating feedback from interested parties to foster healthcare quality improvement. And so the endorsement and maintenance process typically occurs during the measure implementation phase of the life cycle and gathers measure feedback, again, from a, gr a group of diverse individuals representing a range of healthcare expertise and lived outcomes. ENM uses a consensus-based approach designed to be reliable, transparent, equitable, attainable, and meaningful. Um, and again, a variety of endorsement and maintenance resources, including the ENM guidebook and the measure evaluation criteria, can be found on this link on the slide for the PQM website. Next slide. So the ultimate goal of ENM is to determine if a measure is safe and effective, meaning that the measure, the use of the measure will increase the likelihood of a desired health outcome will not increase the likelihood of unintended adverse health outcome, outcomes and is consistent with current professional knowledge. So the ENM process applies measure evaluation criteria to assess the merits of an individual measure, not in the context of a specific CMS program. ENM evaluates if the use of a measure in healthcare will increase the likelihood of desired health outcomes. And one of the key benefits of measured um, endorsement is that it signals to the quality measurement community that your measure has been deemed safe, effective, and meaningful after being reviewed by a diverse group of individuals. Next slide. The ENM cycles are designed to be six months each, each without overlap. So we hold one cycle in the spring, which spans from April to September, and another in the fall, which spans from October through March. And there are six major steps in the ENM process. 
So each cycle begins with intent to submit, where measure developers will provide some basic information about their measures, such as their measure specifications and the level of analysis. And about a month later, measure developers will then provide the full measure submission, which includes information about measure importance and evidence, testing, and the intended use of the measure. And from there, the Battelle team will conduct completeness checks, which is a process we use to ensure that that the application is complete, that the attachments were submitted correctly and all of the applicable information is showing in the application. Uh, shortly thereafter, there will be a public comment period, which consists of an opportunity to provide both written feedback as well as verbal feedback during a public comment listening session. Um, we then hold meetings to collect feedback directly from advisory group members. And this feedback along with public comments is summarized and provided to the recommendation group who then provide written measure feedback and vote on an endorsement decision during recommendation group meetings later in the cycle. There is an opportunity for appeals towards the end of the cycle and it concludes with a final technical report. Next slide. So similar to primer and MSR, ENM committees are composed again of a diverse group of um, individuals representing all facets of the healthcare system, including patients and caregivers and clinicians, facilities, purchasers, rural health and health equity experts, other interested stakeholders such as policy policymakers and health services researchers. Um, and measures for ENM are organized into five project topical areas shown here on the screen. So primary prevention initial recognition and management, management of acute events and chronic conditions, advanced illness and post-acute care, and cost and efficiency. And measures are assigned to these projects based on similar topic and where the measure has the most relevance in a patient's journey throughout the healthcare. Each e &M project has a committee that's further divided into an advisory group and into a recommendation group, and that really helps to maximize member engagement and produce consistent application of the evaluation criteria. So the advisory group reviews measures and provides feedback to ensure a larger number of voices that contribute to the consensus building process. And the recommendation group is the endorsement voting body of the committee. So prior to the endorsement meetings, the recommendation groups again reviews and provides ratings and written comments on measures, taking into account feedback and questions from the advisory group, public comments, and responses from measure developers and stewards. And during the endorsement meeting, the recommendation group discusses the measure and then votes on an endorsement decision. Next slide. So the evaluation criteria that's used for ENM consists of five domains. That's importance, feasibility, scientific acceptability, equity, and use and usability. The first domain is importance, and that looks at the evidence base for a measure and it evaluates if there's a business case, meaning that the existence and the use of the measure leads to a beneficial outcome and is supported by evidence. The importance domain also looks at variation and less than optimal performance of the accountable entity, indicating a need for the measure. Finally, the importance domain considers whether the patient population finds the measure meaningful. The second domain is feasibility, and feasibility is looking at the extent to which the measure specifications can be used and implemented without undue burden and for performance measurement. So this domain reviews whether the data used to calculate the measure are readily available, and if collecting the data is not too far outside of the processes of care. The third domain is scientific acceptability, which consists of reliability and validity. So reliability is looking at the extent to which the measure as specified produces consistent results, and validity is looking at the extent to which the measure as specified is credible and the score is a true reflection of the quality of care when implemented. The fourth domain is equity, and that looks at the extent to which a measure can identify differences in care for certain patient populations and can be used to reduce disparities in care and advance health equity. And so this is currently an optional domain. <clears throat> Next slide. So the final and fifth domain is use and usability, which looks at the extent to which audiences such as consumers and providers and policymakers can use the measure results for accountability and performance improvement. So accountability applications use measure performance results um, to make judgments and decisions be based on performance. So this can be um, confidential reporting for reward or recognition, payment or selection. So um, accountability applications such as public reporting or for accreditation or performance-based 
um, payment or for network inclusion or exclusion. If a measure is new and submitted for initial endorsement, the use and usability domain is looking to see that there is a plan for using the measure in the near future. And if the measure is used, are there improvements that are happening over time or any unintended consequences? The five domains are scored individually as met, meaning that the measure meets the assertions of the respective domain, not met but addressable, meaning the measure does not meet the assertions of the domain, but that the developer can address insufficiencies through reasonable changes. Um, to improve the evaluation against the criteria. Um, and then not met, which means that the measure does not meet the domain assertions and there are no reasonable changes that um, would allow for the measure to meet the domain. So Patel staff and e &M committees apply the measure evaluation criteria to evaluate these five measure properties and ultimately the recommendations group discuss and recommend to the CBE whether to endorse the measure. Next slide. Okay, so we have covered a lot of content for Primer, MSR, and e &M. And so the purpose of this slide is just to show um, as a quick reference to highlight the key differences in each of the three measure review processes and to, and to summarize the key points. Um, so in summary, Primer is the annual process used to evaluate or used to review measures on the MUC list and to recommend measures to CMS for inclusion in CMS quality and value-based programs. Primer is statutorily required under Section 3014 of the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act. MSR is statutorily enabled by the Consolidated Appropriations Act and reviews measures again annually to optimize the CMS uh, measure portfolio and to agree on which measures should continue to be used in CMS quality and value-based programs. And finally, the Medicare Improvements for Patients and Providers Act of 2008 statutorily required HHS to contract with it at CBE regarding measure performance. And so Patel, as the CBE, facilitates the endorsement and maintenance process, which again offers two cycles per year where developers and stewards can submit measures for assessment to determine if they are safe, effective, and meaningful for the patient population and healthcare system more broadly. Um, and so again, e &M measures, uh, e &M reviews measures planned or currently used within an account accountability application and is not limited to CMS programs. Okay, and with that, I will pass it off to Haley to um, walk us through any questions that we've received. All right, yes, thank you to all three of our presenters. Uh, so we'll dive into our Q&A session. If you haven't already, uh, please feel free to use the Q&A feature uh, to submit your questions, and then we'll try to cover as many in-scope questions as possible. So that Q&A feature down at the bottom of your screen there. So we already have a few trickling in. So we'll start with um, one question for Anna. Um, can developers repurpose or leverage documentation submitted for the MUC list reviewed during Primer for e &M? Yes, thank you. That's a, a great question. So um, absolutely, there are some instances where there's similar content across applications that measure developers can leverage for both the, um, the MUC list and for e &M submissions. So for example, information about measure evidence, like clinical practice guidelines and, and peer reviewed literature that's supporting the measure's importance um, and testing information, so performance scores, reliability, and validity. Um, so I'll just note to remember to tailor your content within each application appropriately. So keeping in mind, again, that the focus for primer is on a measure's use within a specific Medicare quality or value-based program, um, and that e &M is assessing the measures to um, more broadly to determine if they are safe, effective, and meaningful for the patient population and healthcare system more broadly. Thank you so much for that response. Um, our next question is for Kim, and it is, can a measure be reviewed by Primer if it is not endorsed? For the, thanks for the question. Um, short answer is yes, uh, but there is a but. <laughs> so oftentimes the measures on the measures under consideration list that have been reviewed um, by primer and, and previous processes, 
they have not gone through the endorsement process. And when that happens, typically it causes or, or has like kind of the ripple effect of the committee members really kind of focusing on and getting focusing on looking at the at the measure fundamentally and thinking about the measure science and is this measure reliable is it valid etc and really focusing on those aspects of it um, when really with primer our I in our ideal kind of conversation we would really be focusing on does the measure meet the unique needs of the program um, and so when a measure is not endorsed, it tends to, again, be a slightly different conversation, tends to be a lot more nuanced, more technical, et cetera. Um, our hope is that given the new endorsement and maintenance process and the fact that it's only six months to get a measure endorsed, and there's kind of a cycle that nicely, a lot, an endorsement and maintenance cycle that nicely aligns um, with, with primer and, and muck list submission and everything. Our hope is that we will see an increase in the number of measures that are endorsed and have gone through the endorsement process prior to being discussed by primer committees. Wonderful. Thank you so much for, for clarifying. Um, our next question is back to Anna here. So is there any overlap in the individuals who serve on the primer, MSR, and ENM committees? Thanks. Um, another great question. So um, Battelle conducts a formal nominations process each year to select individuals to serve on those committees for primer MSR and for ENM. Um, and so when submitting their nominations, individuals can indicate a preference to sit on primer MSR or ENM or on both. Um, but we really strive to ensure a diversity of individuals across committees. So we try to avoid instances where one individual is serving on primer MSR and, and ENM at the same time, but overlap is not prohibited and sometimes it occurs. Thank you so much. Okay, and then we're we're volleying here. We're, we have another one for Kim. Um, so there were a few questions that came in from Mike. So I'm gonna maybe try to summarize um, his question here. So could you explain the relationship or level of alignment between criteria used for primer versus CBE review and how that relates to the CMS quality measure index? Sure. Thanks. That's that's a that's a great question, um, because as we're taking the as we're taking measures through all of these different um, processes and and getting feedback on them, we do want to uh, first and foremost be transparent, um, right, about what the criteria are, but then also be aligned. That way, it's very clear um, what a measure steward, um, you know, like the threshold that the measure steward needs to meet in order to um, to, to do well and, and then to create a good quality measure. Um, so if we're thinking about the, the processes, again, they're really looking at different things. And as such, they have criteria that that overlapped and are in sync with one another, but I wouldn't necessarily say they're, it's the exact same criteria because they're looking at different things. So again, if we're thinking about primer, then we're talking about the appropriateness of that measure for a particular program. Does the measure um, meet the unique needs of that population, really evaluating it in the context of the measures uh, the other measures in the program, and then looking at the impact that that measure could have in the short and long term. ENM and QMI, I think, are very much aligned both in um, kind of goal and subsequently their evaluation criteria. Both of these processes are looking at the measure in and of itself and asking the question of, is this a good quality measure? You know, is it aligned? 
um, is, I'm sorry, not aligned, I'm sorry, is it um, like scientifically acceptable? Um, is it going to fill a gap? Is there that importance, that need to have the measure, um, et cetera? I think where the QMI tends to differ a little bit is that QMI is specific for CMS um, measures. And so we do have some evaluation criteria around uh, agency priorities and whether or not they meet um, our agency priorities. And then lastly, MSR, um, again, MSRs for measures that have actively been used in CMS programs. And so we kind of go back then to it being program specific and looking at performance of the measure um, and evaluating it on that front. E&M, um, as Anna mentioned, is, is, is ongoing in, in the sense that, you know, there is the opportunity to kind of renew um, that endorsement status. And so it's not, you know, it's not this one and done. And so, um, again, it, it can be kind of like a cyclical process in the sense of, of some of these reviews. Um, I hope that answers your question, but please feel free to, to elaborate if you wanted to get into more specifics. Thank you so much. I love, there's so many questions piling in. So I think we, we have a few more we can cover. And like Kim said, if you have any follow-up or clarifying to the discussion to uh, keep adding those into the chat. All right, so our next question is uh, back to Anna for regarding the optional nature of the equity ENM criteria. Can CMS MMS provide more information around why it's optional versus required given national push for equity across HHS? And who determines whether equity will be evaluated, uh, the submitting entity or the ENM committee slash CMS? Thanks, Haley. Um, so I think this question and the next question regarding the equity criteria and the feasibility of, of the data capture are related. So I'll answer them both. Um, so yes, one of the reasons why the equity crit criteria is um, currently optional is around the feasibility aspect. So we are in the information gathering stages where we are looking at what's feasible to collect um, and expect to collect in terms of data elements and methods and approaches for equity. However, um, understanding the, you know, the national push and the importance of equity. Um, looking ahead, we are looking for this to be a required domain um, in 2025. Um, so currently, again, we're in the information gathering phases for e and and we're looking to put together some guidance for measure developers um, for when the, the um, equity domain will eventually become required, um, but it's a process. Wonderful. Thank you so much. So looks like that addressed a few questions there. So then we have, I think, one question left, but there's still time. So feel free to keep adding to the, the chat. Uh, but another one for Anna, um, is the ECQM feasibility assessment required to be completed again for maintenance measures if no significant changes have been made to the measure? So thank you again. Um, so when we're looking at maintenance measures, when we're looking at the, the ECQM feasibility assessment for maintenance measures, we're focused less on the feasibility of the individual data element and focused more on whether there have been any um, feasibility challenges during implementation. Um, so that's it's just kind of framing it a little bit differently. Um, so again, we're not looking for feasibility assessment of each individual data element um, that you've already done during the initial review, but we're looking for any feasibility challenges that you've had during implementation of the measure. Great. Thank you so much, Anna. Let me scan our questions here. There's a few responses in um, that were answered uh, via a written answer, so please pay attention to those if uh, you had a question. Um, and then I don't see any other questions in the chat, so I might just turn it back to our presenters to see if there was anything else they had before we wrap up our presentation today. Okay. 
it sounds like that will cover it. Uh, so thank you everyone so, so much. Just a reminder that this, uh, the slides will be posted on the MMS Hub uh, after our call today, and then uh, we'll follow up uh, later posting uh, the recording and some of our, our great questions that we covered uh, this afternoon. So thank you for your attendance um, and have a good rest of your day.